welcome back, frugal friends. As you can see, <laughs> I've got some rather wacky regalia going on right here. Today we are going to look at some of my upcycles. Uh, we're going to test a few items, I think. Are we testing some stuff? Maybe, maybe not. But the main thing, the main thing that we're doing is looking at our Halloween yard display, or at least phase one. So we do a lot of things, like I have a whole list. In fact, there it is, a whole list of the things that have to be done in each phase of our getting ready for Halloween. Yes, we love Halloween that much that much but we don't like to pay tons and tons of money for it and decorating for any holiday can get really expensive but most of our stuff comes from the dumpsters like everything on here including the headband itself all of this these ears that i've made for my upcoming sisters only trip with my sister raquel to the oogie boogie bash at disneyland uh i made these pirate inspired ears Everything on here, all of it, is from the dumpsters. Every bit of it. Now, of course, I had to buy a hot glue gun and the hot glue sticks, but everything else, some of you will recognize some of these different pieces and different, like, different little things. Like, there's a little jewelry right there, some gems, some of these pirate coins. Remember those from last year? Some of these other gems. Remember when we found the huge pack of all the, like, bugs and scorpions and stuff? Anyway, all of that is from the dumpsters. How cool is that? That is how we save money on pretty much everything in our lives, but especially our crafting and decorating, which many of you know can get very, very costly, especially when it's something that you're passionate about on a regular basis. So we save money by using stuff from the dumpsters. And in this, I don't know how many part series it will end up being. There's three phases and each phase will, you know, have a few parts to it. But we're going to show you how we save money while still getting to do some really fun, really spooky, really awesome stuff for our favorite holiday of the year. The one that we go all out on. I mean, we just, yeah, we do it. So this is one of the things that I've done. And normally uh, this would not be part of phase one because I've never gone to Disneyland for Halloween before. But my sister invited me and I decided I'm going to do it. So I ended up making these ears, but let me show you because I made another pair too, completely with dumpster salvaged items. Ooh, almost completely. It includes something that one of you sent to us. Ta-da. Okay, tell me if you can guess what thing, I'm gonna give you like five seconds. Actually, there's two things. What things on this wacky uh, Nightmare Before for Christmas Haunted Mansion overlay ears, <laughs> what items were sent to us from viewers? Five, four, three, two, one. All right, if you guessed the hand and the little cameo, you are correct. One of our fabulous uh, frugal friends sent us these that they had crafted out of resin, and I just painted the background of the cameo and added some beads and then just glued the hand on right there and I'm uh, making they sent us several and I'm painting the backgrounds of these other ones I'm going to make them into earrings and a necklace to go with this uh yeah added on to this so the things that that you guys so generously gift us our p.o box address is in the video description the things that you so generously gift us we use them as much as we possibly are able to use them we do and uh might have to re might adjust that ribbon but anyway yeah we do what we can with them so just want you to know that anyway there's that and then of course i will get those earrings and necklace done as well so there's part of it now on to the rest of phase one that includes deep cleaning. I'm not going to show you all of that, but deep cleaning the front two rooms of our house because as far as the interior of the house, that's where we do most decorating for Halloween. Uh, the, the majority of what we do is out in the yard, in the front yard. So there's also some deep cleaning prep in the yard, and I'll show you some of that. And this is a first time project for this year. I am making a whole bunch of fabulous tombstones because the focus of our yard display this year is going to be ultimate graveyard. So 
let's go and check all that out. I need to get some of these tablecloths laid out so that I can get started on all of our tombstones and crosses for the front yard uh, Halloween display. I've laid out all of these pieces. You'll see lots of styrofoam that you'll recognize from the bins. And I have glued on with like E6000 some different things, just frames, you know, because I've been trying to use up all those frames and a couple of the wreaths that I kept and assorted pieces of wood. I also cut out just some really flat foam board uh, tombstones. All of these need to be sprayed. That one there is going to be really fun. I still need to glue on that little Y there and the frame. Then over here, these are some of the broken frames that I have found. They're going to be our crosses. And then you'll recognize some of these wooden pieces. Every piece of this is from the bins. I just glued those on and I'm going to spray that all to match and to look like stone. This here is going to end up being a tombstone. It's going to have some of these tubes put in and with some of this corrugated cardboard put in side of it. I'm, I'm still kind of figuring out the design, but it is going to look awesome, I promise you, and you will see when it is done. Here is the tricky thing. You can't just spray regular spray paint onto styrofoam. But let me show you what we found in the bins that is going to solve that problem. Here in my husband's office, I have all of this spray paint and it so happens that some of them are craft foam primer. And I was like, what in the world would I ever do with that when I found these in the bins? Well, now we know. So I'm going to spray all the foam with these craft foam primers. And after I've sprayed that and they've dried, I should be able to put the gray and black and other colors over and it should not be a problem. So how cool is that? The way that all worked out. With the non-foam pieces, obviously there isn't that same spray paint concern. And you'll remember this Krylon black that we also found in the dumpster. There was like a whole box full of all of these spray paints in the craft store bin. Anyway, so these I can go ahead and start spraying. I'm gonna do uh, gray and black and white and we'll see how it all turns out. But for now, I will get started on these. It's a little windy, but it is not supposed to rain tonight. Cross your fingers, frugal friends. I've done the first coats of silver. You can kind of see what I'm going for here. The silver that I had was a metallic. I'm gonna pick up some others tomorrow, more kind of muted, subtle silvers. But you can see that the primer, the foam spray paint primer worked beautifully. Yeah, we only have a few spots where the spray paint melted it. And I really think that's just because I didn't let it dry long enough and I don't think it's really a problem. I'm gonna even some of it out like, like that, but I think it actually will be okay because it just adds more kind of weathered aged look where it did melt the styrofoam just a little. So, and now with that coat on there as well, I think any other color that we add, yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, in some of those kind of grooves and spots, I'm gonna go by hand with some black acrylic especially like here where I've dug in a design. I'll go with black acrylic and a brush and yeah, just kind of dibble dabble in there to highlight those kind of weathered and worn parts. It's gonna be cool, it's gonna be cool. You'll see, just keep following along. This is just another update and there will be many more as this continues. So progress, progress is definitely happening. And look how handy these tablecloths come in. Yeah, these are the ones that we got out of the party store bin, I think it was, and they were pretty well mangled up. So I wasn't gonna be using them for any parties, but they work really, really well as drop cloths. All of this needs to be weeded, uh, deadheaded. I need to do my end of summer chop where I just hack everything down. <laughs> yeah. Olivia is mowing the lawns. 
She's working out in the back right now, so I will at least get these flower beds watered before she makes her way out here to do this one. And then in the shade garden, things are mostly just, you know, they're doing their own thing. There is some trimming to do, but mostly, mostly not. Just, just looking at how cool it, you know, some of these things are. Look how cool that is. Isn't that great? It even had a flower. So awesome. And that fern, beautiful. Doing lovely. I need to apply some bug killer right there. Thing is, I'm not sure if it's snails or ants or grasshoppers that are doing it this time. Darn things. I just love coleus. I do. My elephant ears are doing fantastic. The one that I had given up on is now starting to pop up. How cool is that? So lots to do, lots of work. Gonna just jump in because before you know it, we'll be setting up our Halloween yard display out here. So gotta get a move on. So they are definitely coming along. Reagan brought all of this in for me. They've had time to dry. There are the parts of what will be the crosses. I will get those put together. Uh, so stay tuned for that. We will definitely be showing you more of, of how that all goes. But for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some paint brushes of different sizes. I've got some black paint from the dumpsters, of course, and I'm going to start putting words and numbers and all those kinds of things on the different tombstones. I went with lots of different spackling and sprays of paint, as you can see, to kind of age it and make them all look, you know, like they're real stone. Obviously, they're not real stone, but it's, it's as close as we're going to get <laughs> with styrofoam and, and spray paint. But I think they came along, uh, came out really nice. I'm super, super happy with them. There's another, yeah. Yeah, super happy. This cooler here uh, during phase two, that will be added to. Uh, it's going to end up being a big mausoleum <laughs> with this as like the centerpiece, which will, it, you know, as the whole complete thing will be the centerpiece of our yard display. So stay tuned for that. I, I don't know how to really explain it. There will be pillars around it and there will be a base and there will be a roof and probably an urn and different things. So... <laughs> Just stay tuned. You'll see. You'll see. It'll all come together. There's more of the stuff for the crosses. I'm going to have to make several more of these. So I'm going to look in the attic in the morning and see what other broken frame pieces that, you know, that I haven't put back into, you know, actual frames. See what I have that I can use. And for sure, I'll find more, you know, between now and Halloween. This, I've gotten it sprayed. And so I'm going to add to it like this. This is actually um, the handle of a basket that broke off, but it's going to go beautifully in here and there will be like pillars and some something right here, probably a skeleton face. I don't know. It'll depend on what we find in the bins and what I've got up in the attic. But uh, yeah, all of that's coming along. And then there's the snake that I'm still working on. I've got a lot more work to do on him he needs a face <laughs> and i don't know yet if he's gonna have a rattle i really haven't decided what kind of snake he is i'm kind of thinking maybe going with like the beetlejuice snake but that might just be you know too much <laughs> i might be you know biting off more than i can chew with that one because i don't sculpt you know so like sculpting faces and things like that i no. anywho that is how all of those have turned out at this point but I will definitely on part two of phase one on our next update I will show you once I've gotten this one complete and hopefully the snake will be done but I will definitely at least have all of them put together on their bases so you can see what they look like and I will have written all of the epitaphs and everything on them and show you kind of how I do that but uh, we're gonna put all of this up in the attic as soon as I have written on them and, and let those dry so that they're just not down here in the way on the kitchen table. What do you guys do for your holiday decorations? I don't expect <laughs> everyone to do as much as we do, of course. We are rather obsessed and passionate about it, but tell us about 
some of your favorite holiday traditions, whether Halloween or any holiday. A quick update on the yard. I still have a long ways to go, but we've definitely trimmed a lot. Mostly at this point, what I need to do is pull weeds and then add mulch. Those are just some things that I'm like neighbor weeds. Ugh, so frustrating. But just things that I need to, you know, do to prep for winter. So before I start putting up the yard display, because once I put up the yard display, I can't do anything else really with, you know, the flowers, the yard, anything like that. And once Halloween ends and we take everything down, then we're basically headed into winter. So anything I'm going to do with the yard, whether it's pulling up bulbs for storage or putting down mulch, things like that, it's all got to be done before we start putting up the yard display. Uh, the kids made a <laughs> uh, somewhat of an effort at getting <laughs> all of my trimmings uh, cleaned up. I'm going to have them come back out here and finish cleaning that up. And tomorrow in the morning, I will finish weeding and then stop and pick up some mulch. We'll get all of this mulched and it will be ready. That's pretty much the extent of what I'm going to do as far as preparations. Uh, there are some bulbs I will have to pull up, like all of... Um, my elephant ears, I will pull those up. I will pull up all of the coleus, my begonias, things like that. We'll all have to come up, but I'm not going to do that till probably right after Halloween. Yeah, because they're all really concentrated right over here in the shade garden and like in pots and things. So those shouldn't be a big deal. I will, I will gather all of those up when the time comes. And, and yeah, I don't, I'm not worried about doing that before the Halloween display and especially because they're all looking so beautiful right now I definitely wouldn't want to do that that's uh, a little bit of an update on the yard obviously there's still more to do uh, definitely stay tuned in part two of phase one we'll show you when the yard is hundred percent done and ready for the Halloween display frugal friends thank you so much for coming along on this Part one of phase one of getting ready for our dumpster divers upcycled Halloween yard display. I hope we've given you a couple of ideas that maybe you can do on your own with the things that you're finding in the dumpsters or that are just, you know, there kicking around in your house that we're going to end up in the garbage. Maybe you can use them in a creative way as inexpensive decorations for some kind of holiday or event. I don't know. The idea is to get you thinking, get you using that, you know, dormant creative part of the brain uh, so that we can upcycle, recycle and craft or find new purposes, new uses, new life for all those things that would otherwise end up in the landfill. Um, and along the way, save money on things that, that we're passionate about. I'm definitely going to have to do something with that ribbon. That's driving me crazy. All right. Have a marvelous day. We will see you all real soon.